Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. Now this video is a mashup of different pieces of videos that I put together in the past. And it's one of those videos that could keep you optimistic on what you're holding, while it also addresses some other issues as well. So let's take a look. Now this comes from Brad Garlinghouse. An important topic has come up about protecting retail. The SEC created this mess by proclaiming it was the cop on the crypto beat when it had no legal jurisdiction. Where's that gotten us? Consumers left holding the bag in bankruptcy court while the SEC holds press conferences. It's absurd to blame a judge for faithfully applying the law. We all know legislation, not more regulation by enforcement. It's the only way forward to provide clear rules and protect retail. Glad to see more members of Congress, like Representative Ritchie and Patrick McHenry, champion this. Now, in the last video I did, I talked about that crypto bill that they're putting together, the 21st century crypto bill. And in that bill, it says that you could only invest 10% of your income into crypto. I don't like that part of it at all. The rest of the bill looks great. It takes a lot of power away from the SEC and hands it over to the CFTC. But Brad's right. You know, Gary failed me and you. You know, he failed a lot of other people as well. Look what happened with FTX. But this is what Gary had to say about that. Take a listen. That goal, and you work through, and I think there should be accommodations for the new technologies. We've done this before. When the internet came around in the 1990s, there were a lot of accommodations. Some of them worked out reasonably well. Some of them had unintended consequences. We had something called the Enron loophole where where new exchanges, new ways to do electronic trading of derivatives or swaps were allowed to stay off the grid, off the policy grid entirely. I'm not saying it's the only reason we had the 2008 crisis, but it was certainly part of the crisis. And looking back now, those of us, because I was involved at the time, uh, should have done more to protect the public, should have done more to protect the public. There were other accommodations uh, in the securities laws that have had unintended consequences, but they've roughly worked as, as anticipated, that new bulletin boards allowing trading of securities were brought inside the public policy framework and it's called Regulation ATS. It was sort of like, you didn't have to be fully like the New York Stock Exchange, yep. you could be a little less regulated but you still were inside the framework. So I think that there are a lot of lessons from when the internet was uh, first being adopted. So Gary's been failing us since 2008 is what he's saying right there. And he will continue to fail us into the future. That's why it's so important to take power away from him. I think the CFTC is great. I honestly like every talking point I've heard come from the CFTC so far. You know, they look out for the retail investor, me and you. They see a future for us. They see where years down the road, we could still, new investors, you know, the people that are still sitting there in junior high, all of a sudden they grow up and they go and invest in the crypto and they make money in crypto. That's what you want to see happen inside the United States. You want that option because there's really no other options left to enrich yourself other than crypto right now. Unless you invest in gold or silver, you know, the stock market's rigged against you right out of the gate. So crypto is the next best thing. Now take a listen to what David Schwartz had to say here because he's talking about the biggest problem in crypto. I agree. Do you, how do you feel about the ecosystem now today from maybe a few years ago? I mean, do you feel like we've had a lot of growth where we're going in the right direction? Uh, yeah, I think I, I think the uh, much as much as painful as the bear year was for me, mm. I think that shakeout got a lot of the oh I have a white paper give me a hundred million dollars people out and uh, or the people who are just like I heard that, the, that, that like the, the streets are raining money I want to get in this field <laughs> no interest in building anything or even exactly. understanding the technology or, or I think a lot of those people got shaken out and I think also it proved that there's more to this than just the speculative element that there actually is an underlying technology that is an actual problem that we're solving. 
Exactly. Um, and so I think that's that's really really good. I have to say, sometimes I feel like things are taking forever, and other times I feel it's amazing <laughs> we've gotten as much accomplished in this little mm. time. I think the truth is somewhere in between those two things. But I think there are problems that we can only solve together. Regulatory is a good example. No one company is going to be able to solve some of the regulatory problems. And, and just on the regulatory front, it's not bad laws that are the problem. There are some bad laws that are a problem, but the biggest problem is uncertainty. People who don't know what they need to do to comply with the law because the law is like, for example, there's a law that says that if you take custody of someone's money, like there's certain things happen. Well, when do, when do you do that? You know, if, 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 if I open a payment channel to you and I send you a claim to that, have you taken custody of that money? Or is it still mine? Or like uh, nobody knows what, nobody knows what, what the laws mean. And there's a, seri a serious risk that people will be told, oh, you should have known that you were breaking this law. And so mm. we looked at that law and we honestly could not figure out, and no one's going to put you know, millions or billions of dollars into a business when there are those kinds of risks. Um, so that's, that's, I think, that's, I think, still the biggest problem. I think I should also point out, it is really hard to get bank accounts. <laughs> so, um, that's another yeah. problem. There are hundreds of legal businesses every day that can't operate or open because they either can't get a bank account or lose their bank accounts, uh, some, some, some change has to happen to that. Um, and that. And that is on the government to fix. Um, these, these, these look like private banks making private decisions about what customers they'll do business with, but that's not what's happening. What's happening is it's legal uncertainty and it's legal risk that, that they're mitigating. And, and it is on the government to fix the laws so that legal businesses can, can get banked. And um, I, I. So the biggest problem David sees in crypto is uncertainty legal uncertainty as well plus you take notice how he says you can't get a bank account and that's partly because of our government telling banks to not get involved with crypto companies but the other thing that he talked about early in the in this video is the fact that a lot of people got shaken out because companies came people came into crypto and they started these crypto companies and they thought that they were just going to bring in all this money all at once and all of a sudden everything was going to work itself out but then they realized that they're not solving a real world problem so they got shaken out of this industry for forever and as a retail investor we're now everything's changing around crypto all of a sudden it went from meme coins and rug pulls to us investing in utility and real world use case and you're actually seeing those real world use cases come about on a daily basis through partnerships with this bank and that bank what i'm saying is crypto's changing in a good way and yet there's so much uncertainty still left here because of people like Gary Gensler and a handful of politicians in Washington. Once that uncertainty is gone, all of a sudden we will get mass adoption for crypto. Go to Google, type World's Bridge Currency, you'll find this. XRP is the native cryptocurrency of the XRP ledger. All accounts in the XRP ledger can send XRP among one another and must hold a minimum account of XRP as a reserve. XRP can be sent directly from any XRP ledger address to another. This helps make XRP a convenient bridge currency. Now we always knew it's going to bridge the world's money. But in this video I'm also going to talk about a conspiracy theory from years ago which also might become fact in the very near future. Then you take a look at the XRP ecosystem, the ledger. 300 plus projects developing use cases on the XRP ledger, gaming and metaverse, DEXs and launch pads, marketplaces, ODL customers, wallets, explorers, NFTs, Socify you could add to that as well. XRP ledger is so well rounded and it's going to add so much value to XRP over time. Most people overlook the XRP ledger because they're so focused on this bank partnering with Ripple or this on-demand liquidity corridor opening up. It's the same reason people are still overlooking the big picture and that's going to be tokenization. That's going to be probably bigger than cross-border payments. 
When the dollar, which is the current world's reserve currency, fails, a new reserve currency will be implemented. Dollar to ashes, ashes to phoenix. The rise of the phoenix. The phoenix is the new currency system. XRP will be used for banks, XLM for people, and that those two will be the two top dogs, dualistically working together. This will happen when the marriage is complete, alchemy-wise. The union of balance, not financial advice, just thoughts, of course. Now, everybody in the XLM community will say this is the XLM logo right here. But we were always under the assumption that XRP would become the world's reserve currency. It was conspiracy theory just a few short years ago. But the world's changing today. And, you know, I like to, you know, come up with my own theories sometimes. And when you, I always like to work, look at world events as well. So U.S. dollar will lose status as world's reserve currency. So a lot of people are saying this all of a sudden. But they're not saying that the dollar is going to disappear. It's just going to lose dominance. And it's, it's going to start with the BRICS. And everybody knows that. And that's about to happen in August at some point. But what about XRP taking the place of the U.S. dollar? I'm not quite sold on the idea of that. And I even think that the Federal Reserve introduced Fed now because of what's coming in the near future. I think it's all coming together. And it's all giving that same fall timeline. So when we take a look at this, right, what's next for the Fed? The Fed declared that it would not proceed with the issuance of a CBDC without clear support from both the executive branch and Congress. Over 100 countries around the world, representing over 95% of the global GDP, are researching a CBDC as well as alternative international payment systems. Ten countries have already fully launched a digital currency, and China's CBDC pilot is set to expand in 2023. It doesn't take a lot of imagination to see the end of the road of paper money, as well as the potential risk to po political and economic freedoms that may come as a result. So most people, when they look at Fed now, right, they look at the rest of the world and CBDCs are popping up all around the world as we speak. So why would the Fed then not create a CBDC? They would have to, to compete with the rest of the world. So when they implement that CBDC, what is that going to look like? Well, if we speculate a little bit, most people say that's when XRP will be implemented as the world's reserve currency. The U.S.'s gold-backed digital currency would become XRP. Now, I don't see that happening. However, I've been wrong in the past, and so have you, because everything that we were ever taught to be a conspiracy theory gradually now is becoming a fact. And I'm not going to say anything can't happen at this point, because we've seen so many, so much, so many things. CBDCs at one point were a conspiracy theory. They weren't supposed to even come about until 2050 or beyond. But here we are in 2023, and they're already here. And then even people said, you know, XRP would not be at a high value in the future. David Schwartz confirms it's built to be a high value. The IMF talks about back stable coins backed by some sort of real world assets or precious metals and in the same sentence they talk about xrp and xlm the same goes for the bis so i'm where i'm going with this is the fact that anything can happen and that's why it's so important to continue holding your xrp because at any moment we could get some huge announcement around this and everybody right away in the comments section will say, you're totally wrong. That's not what's going to happen. XRP is never going to break over this amount of money or that amount of money based on market cap and previous cycles. But I think that's about to change as well. The XRP, commu XRP community is super extra bullish. I hope we go up, but usually points to another shakeout. We'll see. Now, most of you are probably thinking the same thing. We're going up from here. 
But a lot of people are still expecting that massive shakeout to happen. That was all talk is around XRP for a number of years as well. People talked about the internet going down. Massive global power outage happening. Even NASA gets behind this at some point and says a solar flare which could take down the internet for years. But you know... I think this is what's going to happen. We're going to see a major pullback. I think we're going to have a run-up, then a major pullback, and some big news. Most people will sell that news, get shaken out of the market for good. Then all of a sudden, we pop off from there. That's what makes sense to me, because if we were always told that you're not supposed to be holding XRP, and it's not for retail investors, how do you shake out the retail investor? Long, long sideways action with a downward trend based on some sort of terrifying news around your investment like XRP. Bitcoin, XRP, they want to kick you off the train. All you need to do is remind yourself of the mindset from the day you decided to put your money on the table. It's that simple. Stay strong. The next big leg up is coming any day soon. And they do want you off the train. That's a fact. That's why these politicians working with the big banks and the SEC have been trying to shake down the crypto space over the last how many months now? Because they know the potential of cryptocurrency. It will enrich the average person. They don't like the idea of that. When you see enterprise and institutions coming into this market, can you really put a max target or a minimum target for these cryptocurrencies and many others that are in the utility space? We like to speculate on how high these can go, but in reality, they do not have a boundary. And that's true. That's why I said market cap and previous cycles really don't matter to me. I'm basing my outlook for XRP on utility. And if utility, like XRP has, pushes the price of XRP, I think market cap, that'll come. That'll come from the institutions coming into crypto, getting on board. You got to remember, we're very early to crypto. Everybody likes to say, well, you're too late on this crypto or you're too late on that crypto. I don't think you're too late on any of these utility coins. Come on, look at XRP. It's sitting under a dollar right now. It's still a steal of a deal. But these prices won't hold forever. But again, I wanted to cover the conspiracy theories. You know, world reserve currency is one of the big ones. And you could see that happening. But I think it's more of the world's bridge currency. The trust layer. High-valued stablecoin of the future. That's what I see for XRP. And anybody who downplays tokenization will be left behind. They'll sell once we pump off of cross-border payment. I'm here for the long term on XRP because none of us know how high it can go. And we can only speculate at this point. But with that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.